Well, all right. Here we go again tonight. We're live, back online uh, with our Bible study class, and we're here in person with our Bible study class tonight. Remind those of you that are watching with us uh, online, if you have comments or you have questions, someone will be monitoring. They can uh, certainly pass those along to us. And we just ask that you just uh, make sure that you come online when you do. Just tell us, hi, I'm joining, I'm glad to be with you, and where you're from, so we have some idea as to what's going on. But so now we're going to get started and do lesson six. We're on our foundations for doctrine or of doctrine. And we're going to talk about a... Anybody have any ideas on faith? So she's so for the evidence of faith. Oh, uh, she took the old, she took the old tried and true definition. The evidence of things hoped for. All right, anybody else? I know I've kind of left these a lot more fill in the blankish. Yes. And I have a problem. <laughs> I can't remember all your words. I'll try to be slower. <laughs> which which well, most people would say I'm probably pretty slow already. Anyway. Mm -hmm. All right, so number one we look at is uh, the basis for faith. What we look at is the basis for faith consisting of a relationship with God. So anytime we want to talk about faith, we're looking at the basis of that being a relationship with God is faith. Now why would, why would I say that? Why would I write that down? Have to have faith to believe in Him. Have to have faith to believe in Him. Exactly. So, if you, if you cannot wrap around the thought process that there is a God, you have to have faith because we're, we're believing in something that we haven't seen. Right? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let's, and you got some explaining to do. <laughs> I mean, if, you, if you've had a, a close encounter of God kind in person, I'd like to hear about it. Uh, that's where we're at. If, 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 you, if you understand to believe in God, you have to, you have to have to that relationship. You have to believe in something you've never seen, but you know is there. It's kind of like it's kind of like this. I can't see air. But you know it's there. But I know that it's there. And I know when it's not there. That's right. Underwater. Yeah, underwater, that's one place. <laughs> I've also been in a couple of I've also been in a couple of structures where mm. the air wasn't there or the air wasn't all that great either. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> and you know when it's not there. You know when you know when you know when you're not getting the full amount of oxygen into your system and the, the current status of what we breathe normally, 21% oxygen, I think it is, is this, the current mixture that we breathe on a normal rate in the air. We know when it's below that. You, when, you're, when your system falls below that, what happens? You start to not get enough oxygen. Your brain doesn't begin to function quite like it should, right? So you need, you need all of that. So what we look at is we don't necessarily we don't necessarily know or see that God's there, but we know that He's there. Mm -hmm. We operate in faith, knowing that God is there, and we have a relationship with something that we can't see, but we talk to, and we can have conversation with, we can have quiet time with, we can have all of these experiences with, and if we'll be still enough and quiet enough. And we wait and tarry, we can hear from the Lord. Because his word declares, my sheep you know my voice. Yeah. Meaning, we can hear from God. Every one of us can hear from God. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, that was weak. Man, that was weak. Every one of us can hear from God. Amen. Amen. Yes. So the basis is that for a relationship with God, you got to have faith. You can't, you can't have it any other way. It's an attitude of dependence, which requires another to fulfill one's deepest needs. We're dependent upon God for this relationship. Now, I found this interesting story about faith. And I thought, this is kind of, this is kind of interesting. So it, always, it says it starts with you. And there was a man by the name of Elton Shrewbud. And he relates the story of this man who had this crazy idea that he wanted to walk a tightrope or a tight wire across the Niagara Falls. That's crazy. But he not only wanted to walk his tight wire across Niagara Falls, he wanted to do it pushing a wheelbarrow with a man. Uh, 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 and the man wheelbarrow. And so this guy, this this man, this is spare, this guy that had great aspirations, he decided that he would probably go to practice. Seems like a good idea. So he erected this uh, simulated practice field in his backyard where he put a wire up and he started practicing in his backyard. So daily, uh, this determined man went out in person and he practiced in his backyard. And he did it first, he did out, he got out there with the, with the, you know, the, you see him with the balance bar and uh, that helps him walk across that wire. Uh, so he went out there and he started practicing with this balance bar. And later he got good enough he didn't need the bar. He was, he perfected it. They're probably a whole message right there. You know, you yeah, know the practice. more you practice, the better you get. That's right. <laughs> anyway. So eventually after after all this hard work, the wire walker became he became really good. And at the last day, he arrived at his hazardous undertaking at Niagara Falls. The neighbors and persons from the press all assembled. They were all there. And they were nervously looking across at the rushing water. Now, I've never been there. It's on my bucket list to go someday. But uh, they're all looking at this rushing water at, and all that's going on below and what's going to take place. And the stuntman or this guy who decided to walk across, he says, to his admiring friend, Joe, do you believe I can do it? Okay. Pretty easy for Joe. Joe says, I absolutely believe you can. The guy asked him again, as he looked out over the falls, Joe, do you really believe man stopped and he said, I really believe you can. The man said, fine. You're my man. Get in the wheelbarrow. <laughs> now, I know that's an interesting story, but let's put it into practicality. Let's put it into practicality. How easy as it is, is for us to say, I believe, until it's us in the world. Yeah. Well, that changes the dynamics. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I believe for you. I believe you can do it. I believe, I believe you can, I believe you can get up and sing the song of the Lord. I believe you can get up and make a prayer. I, I believe you can get up and do this. I believe you can do it until it's your time in the world. And then it's, I don't know. Or, or it's, 
like this, I can believe for somebody else who needs a healing for their physical body. Oh, but when it's me, I'm in the barrel now. Do I have the same thing? Or do I do I need that somebody else to step up and get in the barrel for me? I know that made you all climb. <laughs> I'm, I'm throwing out this thought for you because if we begin to look at that scenario and that that illustration of how God operates. Where are we at? I mean, words are cheap. Yeah. Really. Anybody can say, I believe. I can say, yes, I believe in God 100%. But am I willing to get into the barrel and say, yes, God, wherever this barrel takes me, if I get across to the other side, yeah. fine and dandy. But if I go over the edge and we end up in the falls... I know that you're still going to bring me out through all of the turmoil, all of the all of the problems, all of the situations. I know that I'll wash out on the good side because you haven't left me, you haven't forsaken me. No matter what happens to me, I'm going to come through this. I put my trust in you 100%. My hope and everything that I have belongs to you, God. I have faith that you're going to break me through this one way or the other. The easy way or the hard way, but I know you won't abandon me. You go first. <laughs> you go first? <laughs> How many of us have already been in the barrel? How many feel feel like you've already gone over into the falls? How's that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, how many of us feel like we already went over the falls? I get that. But that's the whole point is, where are we at? And if, if we come forward and we want to say, okay, well, I have, I have faith for the entire vision for this property, God's golden acres, do we have faith for it? Do we really have faith for it? Because if we really have faith, we'll be all in it. Or are we being drug into the barrel and drug across the wire? <laughs> Those of you that are online, it's crickets here. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe it's crickets online too, I don't know. I just throw that out there because I thought it was interesting. If we really are saying we have faith, that's the only way we're going to get through this. We can't allow our faith to waver. The world's looking for us to waver. What do you think would have happened if the man would have said, I don't think you can make it, buddy. I'm here just to see the train wreck. A lot of people usually are too. That's see, true. and they are. Yeah, that's true. I mean, who watches NASCAR for just to see people go around in a circle, honestly? Come on, get get the wrecking already. I don't get it. It's been sleeping. But I mean, it's 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 those types of things that happen. You know, yeah. the world's looking for us to fail. And our faith has to believe we're not going to fail. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We have to believe that even if we make a mistake, God's there to pick us up. Yeah. He's there to carry us through. Amen. So let's look at it. Let's look at faith. We look at it and it's the, the dictionary definition is faith is a noun. And it completes trust or confidence in someone or something. So what we're looking at is, do we have confidence in God? Is our confidence shaken? Do we have this strong belief in God? 
or in the doctrines of, of faith, of God, it's based on this spiritual apprehension of who He is? Do we have that? When we break the etymology down of that word faith, we get it out of the, we get it out of the Latin, and the Latin says it's the word fideus, and it's an old French word as well. And it, it says it's confidence or it's trust in a person, a thing, or a concept. So we went from a strong belief, and then we get down to the etymology of it. It's a trust. So when we get to faith, we're looking at confidence and we're looking at trust. Yeah. Has our confidence and our trust been shaken? <clears throat> now, if you were gonna, if you were gonna ask me about the uh, political realm, I would say, yeah, my faith and my confidence has been shaken. Mm -hmm. If you were going to ask me about the CDC, I'd say, yeah, maybe my faith is, has been shaken. If you people could just give me one answer and stick with it. <laughs> they don't have any confidence. But see, that's kind, of, that's kind of where we're at. We look a little further and we look at, we look at faith in the, in the and it's a, it's a reliance upon and trusting God, a central emphasis. It's the central emphasis of Christianity. How can you become a Christian without faith? Anybody want to answer that one? I can't. I can't. You can't. You can't, right? So, it, it takes com confidence, it takes trust, it takes this faith to have the relationship and to be saved, right? We're, we're all in agreement, right? Amen. So why is it then when something else comes along and we need to believe with all of our heart, soul, mind, and spirit that our faith is shaken? Because we're human. I know, I will tell you from our, my experience in this is as we've walked through our life and gone through the things we've dealt with, you know, but then we have even recently um, uh, have um, not actually dealt with some things that have happened. Not that it's shaken our faith, but it, I just remember to, just for instance, when it was Renee, I just remember thinking, so the business is like, guess we've never done this before. You know, it's like, okay, we've been. <laughs> and I, I, it took time for me to, you know, actually give, you know, Renee over to God. It was a very scary thing. And I know what all these years, but I don't, sometimes maybe it's just a different scenario. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I don't, and I said, we're. So, we're so, but with the, the first time you do something, it's always scarier, right? Right. I mean, there's always a part of us that goes, eh, right? That's the human nature part of it. Mm -hmm. What happens? What happens the next time that it comes up? Not so bad. <laughs> it's what? You've gone through that. But but you just said something else. What was that you just said? It's not as bad, right? No, it's not bad. I can deal with because it. Because why? Because he took you through last yeah, time. Yeah. Because, and what is that? What is that that you just that you just achieved? Confidence. You just achieved confidence mm -hmm. because you went through something, and therefore, because you went through something, your faith and your measure of faith increased because of confidence. Are you getting anything out of this? Mm -hmm. yes. 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 Very good. That's how that's how we increase our faith. That's how we increase our believing. Is by going through things. Mm -hmm. Now, isn't that interesting? That our faith gets increased because we go through things. Mm -hmm. 
Makes sense. If you were to go back and you were to look at the original, the original plan of God for the Israelites, his original plan was to give them the land. But his his plan was not to give them the land all at once. Go back and check it out. Check out what I've done. He said, I'm gonna, I'll send an angel before you, but I'm not, you won't get it all at once. Why? Just, here's, the, here's another. You go to Psalms 23, just like I posted today. Why do you think you go through the shadow of the valley of death? There's no, there's no overcoming, there's no victory if it's given to you and you don't have to look at the next battle before you. Why do you walk through the valley of the shadow of death? So you can go through something and experience it and get stronger from it. Oh, I know no one likes that theology, right? That's, I know, that's bad teaching, Rick. <laughs> Nobody, don't teach that. I'm sorry. But I, I will say that it can also have a detriment to your faith depending on your attitude. That's how you How you approach it. Very true. Exactly. Very, Very much true. Because we know that soon after they didn't follow God's instructions, they got to wander around in the wilderness, right? For 40 years until they were all gone. That generation of unbelievers had passed. Oh, what a tough lesson. I don't, I don't want to be there, God. You know, how many of us complain when we get to a certain situation in our life? You know, we're, set, we're set up against something, uh, just like Pastor Dale was saying. We're set up against something, and we're the first things out of our mouth is, but God, why, why are we going to go through this? Why, why are we going to do this? Why, why are we doing all this? And this, I don't, this isn't right, God. Oh, instead of just saying, hey, God, I know you got this. I don't like it. I don't, I don't have to tell you that I like it, God. But I'm going to praise you all the way through it because I know that we're going to finish this together. And then there's sometimes when you don't think you're going to make it through because of the, the decision and choices that you put yourself through. And you end up in the wilderness. But praise God, some of us walk out of that and, you know, made it through the valley of the shadow of death. And, you know, but there are are some there are people out there waiting to hear that there is a light, there is a way out, and so they can get out of the wilderness. Yeah. So they're waiting for the cloud to move. Yeah. Yeah. Because I remember being there when I thought that there there was no way out. There, you know, lost all hope, lost, mm -hmm. you know. I I pleaded and cried out to God, but you know what? In his timing, there, there was that day, and I had to make sure that I was open to what I asked for and recognize that that was God's door opening and move. So. Nice. Good stuff. <laughs> Good yeah. Good. So, if we look at this, it, we look at faith and it opens up the human soul to trust. 
That's part of faith. Trust, confidence. It opens us up to give. It opens us up to love. It forms. And it forms the basis for really all relationship faith does. I mean, can you have a relationship without faith? If, if you don't believe in the person that you're trying to have a relationship with, if, whether it, it's a potentially uh, to be marital type relationship, I've tried to choose my words here, mm -hmm. a type of marital or even a friend, even a friend that you want to have a relationship and you don't have the faith to believe that they got your back, what kind of relationship do you have? You have a relationship where you only give them as much as you trust them with. Is that the kind of relationship that God wants us to have with Him? Uh, God, I only trust you with this much in my life. The rest of it, I'm still going to handle it. Well, let me just give you this new splash and new break. Been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, and wrecked the car doing it. <laughs> It don't work. It won't work. Let's find another plan. Yeah, but don't you think that sometimes as a new Christian, though, if the city steps, I don't mean that, you know, like they start out and it's a step process. I trust it. You know, I trust God with this. I trust God with that. I know, because I, I know um, Laura, and she got serious with God again. And I watched her, and it's been a process, but she has taken those steps. And But she built her relationship because God, uh, she prayed, and God and her had that connection, and she built the trust, you know, in God to where, okay, I've trusted you with this. Not saying that's the way to right. do it. Some people can go all, all in. But, you know, with her, I, but I honestly watched it and think she and God have a very true relationship that's really unique. So. It's, I mean, it's, just, it's the same thing with your mind. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Do you, do you believe? Do you trust God? Or do you only trust Him with a certain amount? Mm -hmm. well, I'll move on because I don't know. Uh, <laughs> So when we look at that, we look at the other side. Let's look at the other side of faith. What do you think the other side of, of faith is? You're talking about the opposite side of faith? Yeah. yeah. I mean like unbelief? Exactly. Unbelief. So the opposite of faith is unbelief. <clears throat> right? Yeah. And unbelief, on the other hand, is actually pride. That says, I don't need anyone for a relationship. I don't need God. I don't need, I don't need you. I don't need you. I don't need you. Well, it's an also unbelief. Us trying to diminish God for who he is. Yeah. Because we're saying that God can't do something for us. So therefore we we try to put we try to bring God down to our level. And we diminish him by trying to do that. Instead he's always wanting us to come up. Yeah it's, his words are instructions for us to come up to Zion. Come up to his holy mountain, his high place. He'll meet you right where you're at, but The ultimate goal is for us to rise above all of the situations, all of the things that are going on. In fact, I even have this, I even had this vision over over the weekend that God was basically saying it's time for people to unload the ballast out of their life. Because all of the ballast is weighing you down. And the waves and the storms that are here 
are already crashing over the side. And when you cast the ballast off, the weight that's inside, the ship rises. And if there was a time for the ship or the church to rise, it's today. Without the ballast, without all the cares, without all, and really, what are, what, are, what are all the cares? What are all the cares, really? It's the unbelief. Honestly, it's, a lack, it's the lack of faith that we have, that God has it. It's the fears, it's, the, it's all of those things. Mo? Something that this reminds me of, this song that says the opposite of faith is in doubt, it's when I have it all figured out. Mm -hmm. And it's like when we're walking with God, there are times that we do doubt, you know, like we can be that guy that is standing in front of the little barrel and we're like, eh, I don't really know about this, but God's like, take my hand and trust me and you'll see. And so then when we get in there, our doubt is turned into faith and then our faith is turned into confidence. And we now learn because we've gone through that whole phase of doubting and then our faith and our confidence. So, I thought that was really cool. And here, I, yeah. just, I just read this. This was in Galatians 5, 6. For in Christ, neither circumcision availeth for anything, nor circumcision, for uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Yeah. And, and see, those, they all, those yeah. two have to work together. And, you know, faith, uh, let me see if I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to say this right. Faith has one level. Unbelief has numerous levels. I mean, there, I mean, there, there are literally numerous yeah. levels. I mean, you say, for example, I'm not sure God is going to do this. I'm not sure, and then, then you would increase that. Yeah. I know that God is not going to do that. I know that God can't do that. I don't even know God exists. Mm. I'm sure that God doesn't exist. Mm. Different levels of unbelief. There's only one level of, of faith, and that is belief. Now, I understand that there's, like you said, there are measures of that that can increase, but it's still one level. I mean, it's either I believe or I don't believe, and there's several levels of I don't believe. That makes sense. And it's a whole lot easier to level up in unbelief than it is in faith. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because we can go, we can go from a level playing field to and nothing flat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what what drives that? What do, you, what do you think drives that? Fear. And fear is what? Fear is unbelief. Right? Yeah. It's it's just like it's just like the snake. I can't watch snakes on TV. No. <laughs> oh, it, 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 they'll tell you. I start having. Panic attacks just watching them. I know somebody else does that too. Why? Because because I had an encounter with one that I've never gotten over. Okay? But you're in the safety of your own home. Oh yeah. And yet it strikes or triggers what is a memory inside of me. Yeah. And we could we could really delve off there probably. Mm -hmm. I, I, I remember they're triggers. Um, triggers. Yeah. They're triggers. Mm -hmm. Yes. That only provide you with doubt and fear to keep you from reaching the potential of what God wants to bring you to. Absolutely. And all it does is, is so when that triggers, and, and if I were to go back to that time, I have to go back and remember, you know, I was lost then. But if, if I were to go back to this day, I would have to say, hey, 
I don't have anything, I, I don't have anything to worry about because I could go back and look at many other times that I should already be dead. And the reason I'm not is, but God. Because God had a plan. And if God had a plan for me through all those other events, He had a plan for me to get by that particular prayer, rather, that day. Except, it still triggers. I still, I still have to get over it. If you want to love love, I have one in my basement right now. <laughs> and I'm, what? I'm, you want me to level up? Yeah, level up. If you want to level up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm take care of no space or a That's me. <laughs> and, and here's okay. my answer. I'm not getting in that one. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. I'm here. What color did that? So let's look at let's look at number two. <laughs> Repentance. It's gonna be a repeat. Repentance prepares our heart to believe. And faith is the channel through which God's grace flows into man's life. So what are we saying? Repentance prepares our heart to believe. How do we prepare our heart to believe? You want to know? Mm -hmm. It was in the last four weeks of class. Uh, <laughs> repent, <laughs> you yeah. sinners. It was through a word. It was through a word I gave you called metanoia. The Greek word for repentance. Meaning, basically, when we get a mind change about repentance and our mind and our thinking about it changes, it translates to our heart and our heart changes. And that's when we have then the faith to believe because it, repentance then repairs or that metanoia, that mind change, prepares our heart to fully believe who we are in Christ. When we get it from here to here, it's a complete job. We're changed. We're changed. No, it's no longer just word service, but it's we are changed. We're not recognized the same anymore. In fact, that senior pastor Afton used to, to say it this way. He used to say, we need to change our what are stinking thinking? And start thinking like God wants to think. We ought to take on what? The mind of Christ. And if we are in true repentance and we believe that our mind has changed because we've now believed that everything that we did in our past, every sin that we committed and has been covered underneath the blood and we have a mind change that we are no longer, we're no longer a sinner, but now we are a saint. And we ought to start believing who God says that we are. God doesn't say, you're still a sinner. God says, you're a child of the Most High God. God doesn't say, well, you're going to eventually make it to be sainthood. No, He says, you're not waiting to get your wings Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, you already have sainthood if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and you've repented and your life is an example of His life working through you. You're changed. You're a different person. Amen. 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 That's what happens through repentance. That's what happens through believing that we are and oh, hallelujah, if we would just believe we are who he says we are. But so many of us, I'm trying not to look at anyone, I'll just look <laughs> over here. So many of us walk around with the defeatist attitude that we kick our lower lip 
and we are trying to convince ourselves that we are nothing, I'm going to tell you that's not faith. You don't believe what God's Word says because His Word doesn't tell you that you're a worm. His Word doesn't tell you that you're crawling around as the low life. His Word declares that if you have confessed unto me and you have repented unto me, you are a child of mine. You have an inheritance. That's not worm material. That's saint material. Nobody, nobody has to gather together and look to see what miracle you performed. Nobody has to take a boat. The Father... The Son and the Holy Spirit already got together and they said, they're mine. I claim them. They're my child. They're safe. The boat's already been cast. <clears throat> Want some really good news? My Bible tells me before you were ever born, He already picked you out. Oh, you mean that I did such and such and such? Well, did God take His name off of you? Did God stop dealing with you? Did God change his mind? God doesn't change his mind about that kind of stuff, folks. Now, you might have to go down a longer road to get back on course, but the ultimate goal hasn't changed. So repentance prepares the heart to believe. Faith is channeled through which God's grace flows into our lives. Hallelujah. Number three. Faith towards God comes from having laid the foundation of His Word and repentance from dead works. Faith comes to find life and salvation. We look at Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1. And it says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. Hebrews 6 1. Oh, okay. Yes. Hold on a second while I. Let me pull up another version here for you. So. Hebrews 6 1, we look at the LT, it says, Listen to this. Long ago, God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. And now, that's not 6 1. Hold on. 6 1. Go. So, let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again. Let us go on instead and become mature 
in our understanding. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. What's he saying? We ought, to, we ought to be beyond that. We ought to already have our minds right. So there's this, this other example of, uh, called the rich employer. And it's Peter... Elderspell, and he tells of this rich Christian who had a large company of employers or employees, I'm sorry. And he said that many of them, they may have them owed him money. And he was constantly trying to teach them something about Christianity. And one day he hit upon a plan and he posted a notice of his employees to see uh, that said, All those who will come to my office between 11 and 12 o'clock on Thursday morning to present an honest statement of their debts, uh, of their statement of their debts, and we'll have them canceled at once. And it says the debtors read the notice, and with great deal of skepticism, and on Thursday morning, although they gathered in the street in front of his office, not one of them went in the door. Instead, they gossiped and they complained about their employer. And they ridiculed the notice he had posted. And they said it didn't make sense. But finally, at 11.45, one man jumped forward, dashed up the steps into the office, and he presented the statement. Why are you here, this man asked? Because you promised to cancel the debts of all those who would come as you instructed. The other replied, and, do you believe the promise? Yes, I do. Why do you believe it? Persisted the employer. Because although I was too much, although it was too much for me to understand, I know that you are a good man who would not deceive anyone. And the rich man took the bill and marked it up, paid in full. At which time the poor man overcame by emotion, cried out, I knew it. I told him so. They said, it couldn't be true, and now I'm going out to show them. Wait, said the benefactor. It's not quite 12 o'clock. The others are not entitled to any special proof of my sincerity. When the clock struck 12, the forgiven debtor ran out waving his receipt in the face of his fellows. And with a mad rush, they made for the door, but it was too late. The door was locked. You see, the repentance part of it in our life should be settled. We should believe that when we come to God with repentance, when we ask Him for forgiveness, that it's a settled and a done deal in our lives. And it takes faith to believe that. If we don't settle the issue and we don't truly believe that it's ever taken care of, is it ever really taken care of? Because what we're saying is, my sin's too big for you, God. My, my debt on my piece of paper is too large. You can't wipe this out. Right? I like to go back to what Brother Lacey used to preach, and I've heard him say a couple of different times. He preached this message. Is there anything too big for God? 
Is there anything that he can't do? Is he God or not? Is he God or not? Is he God in your life or, or not? Is he Lord of all or Lord of part? <coughs> That's where we're at. And folks, it's tick-tock, 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 tick-tock. <laughs> Or, or being on <laughs> uh, that's going on, folks, right now. Is that my phone? That I don't know what that was. No, it's You're still on there. Okay. I wasn't sure. But, but as the clock's tick tocking, folks, we still have time. We still have time to go in faith and believe that whatever it is that we have to for, can't seek forgiveness for and repent for, we still have time to have our debt wiped out. Yeah. While well, there's an entire world that's sitting out in the front, yelling and screaming and complaining about a cruel God that would send people to hell, not realizing that they made the choice by themselves. They could have believed what has been posted, what has been written, what has been preached, what has been spoken, what has been shared, that there is a way that is right for a man to come to. There is a way that God made where there seemed to be no way. There is a path for salvation for every single person to believe in Him. If they will only come and say, I knew it, I knew that I could believe in this one. I knew that I could come to Jesus Christ and have my sins forgiven. That's the kind of faith that we have got to come to, not only for our personal lives, not only for the fact that whatever that we need to seek repentance over, but that's the kind of faith that we have to come to for every piece of our life that we're dealing with. Whether it is a situation that has come up and arose, whether it is a health issue, whether it is a family issue, we have to believe that God has this. Nothing is too big for God to handle. There is nothing that He cannot do. And that if He brought you to this situation, He has a plan to get you through to the other side. Stop fretting. Stop sweating it. Start believing. Start having confidence in God. Start, start exercising your faith. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and one of these things I'll just teach and not preach, but nah. I won't guarantee. <laughs> we'll call it a night. I think I may have done enough for a night. So Father, we are so thankful. God, and we we take this lesson, God, and we say, God, <laughs> we, we want to increase our faith. We want to believe for greater things. But God, we'll start with just believing that you're enough. That your grace is enough, your mercy is enough, that your blood that was shed for us is enough. And God, we ask you just to change the way that we think. Let's, God, let us see. And put on the true mind of Christ for each and every one of us, God. That we don't struggle. We aren't double-minded. We don't strive. But we thrive in you. Now, God, go with us. Keep your hand of safety and protection upon us. And 
bring us back, God, to this house for great praise and great worship and great things to happen. We come, when we come again, God, we come with faith and great expectations of what you're going to do in this house. The miracles that you're going to do. The signs, the wonders, the changing of life. 